Welcome back, everybody, to our Let's Play of Ravenloft Strad's Possession. Now, when we were last together, I finished going through the old church here, and we got the key to the cemetery. But before we visit the cemetery, we have two other places, well, I guess three other places, if you want to get technical, that we're going to check out. First, we're going to go back towards the caverns and help that werewolf. We have the magic spells necessary to cure him, but we need to find and defeat the progenitor. That's the werewolf that gave him the curse in the first place. So, let's head in here and see if that werewolf is out and about. But, we'll cast some spells to make ourselves a little tougher. And wander around a bit. Werewolf should be around here. But it may be too early, and the werewolf might not be out. That's right, day and night effects. Where are you, Beth? More bats. Burn them with fire. Alright. Looks like we're gonna have to wait until night falls. So, let's head over to the werewolf's cave, along with the bats, and rest for a little while. Hopefully it's night time. If not, I'll just play around until it is night time. Excellent. A little prayer to power us up. And light, or else we might as well use it for something. Ah, oh, burning hands is useful. Alright, so since it's night time, the werewolf should be out. It also means other werewolves are going to be out too. This one. The werewolf we're looking for is an albino one. And while we're fighting it, it should actually say something like albino werewolf. There he is. Throw a fireball at him. Excellent, and we're down one werewolf. Let's go back and help that poor man. Now, I think it's as simple as a matter of putting the scrolls in our hands and using them. Let's find out. Alright, here's the guy. Here are our scrolls. And... Excellent, it worked. Oh, God! Pure, untainted, innocent blood fills my veins. At last, I am free! My raging night of the soul is ended! We are glad for you and happy to have been of help. Can you find your way home? But I have no home. No worldly possessions. No longer. They are yours. Here, this key I give you opens a door to a house in the village of Barovia. The house and everything within it are yours. To do this is the smallest reward any man might confer for the salvation of his mortal life. I cannot return. Many of my victims' belongings are there. What will you do with your wife? What will you do with your life now that you are healed? I remember my victims. I can still see the startled, blazed look in their eyes when my weight and strength pinned them beyond hope of escape. When my growls were close upon them and the hot breath of animal fury was against their throats. Now, though I be weak and mortal, I must make amends. I must help those families I have cruelly torn. Alright, 
Well, this werewolf man is now going to go and live his life, trying to make up for what happened in his werewolf form. And we, for our efforts, get to go to his house and claim the belongings there. First we're going to have to find it. I think I know where it is. And there's another house in Barovia we have to visit if we want to continue the game. So, let's go find those two places. Is that a Darkling? <laughs> I'm going to assume that that wasn't the Darkling. We put it down in one blow. That was a brigand. There are more brigands. Let's beat them up. Okay, I'll double check our map. Okay, I think this is the house right here, right next to it. No, Darkling, we are not going to spend our time with you. And there it is. Let's see what goodies his house has to offer. Let's see. Oh, another halibird? I like halibirds. Cast the tech magic, so that way we only hang on to the uh, more useful goodies. I don't think we're going to need non-magical, non-magical equipment. And that's a sling bullet. I like that. What else do we have? Shield? It's not magic, so away you go. Plenty of bows. Oh, got lots of dexterity. That will raise a character's dex. Now, who could use it? Gordon, let's see if that helps you. Yep. Sets your dex to 18. Some more chain mail. Nope. Quiver. An empty quiver. Don't need that either. See what's in that pouch. I think that pouch is going to have a nice goodie for us. Yes. It's the ring of regeneration. That ring will slowly recover our health over time. Now I do mean slowly, it's gonna be something like a few hit points every minute or so. Now there's one more place we have to look, and I think it's really close. Yeah, it's this house right up here. I came to destroy you! Yet, in tasting the will of this body, I know you to be different than those who slew us long ago. My name would have been Strobel then, a humble jeweler. He and his keep by the skill of his hands, content in both life and the love of his wife and children. Now I am vengeance, unappeasable, unwilling to forgive. I have risen up to exact revenge on those who murdered us. And though I will not kill you, I will use you. He who took our lives was called Victor Grimmig. In the years to follow, he became rich. A powerful man capable of escaping all justice. At last, it is believed he escaped death itself and rules still from the darkness of his own tomb. Go, go to the cemetery and 
find you there, a lord of ghouls, the undead murderer of my family. Destroy Grimish, or I will turn my inner appetite for vengeance upon you! How did you come to this, if you were once, as you say, a humble jeweler? Thieves in the night! They came for stones, for amethyst and agate, for opal and emerald. These I gave them freely, yet their leader, Grimish, chose a dark course and stole from us our precious lives. I begged, but it did not stay their evil hands. I have sought them all out. All are gone, save one, Grimish. The Ghoul Lord. Will you release us from your influence once we have done as you command? Some humanity remains in this, my fearsome presence. Yes. Destroy the Ghoul Lord, and you are free. Further, I will share with you a secret. Go now. Fight, fight, live, and return. There he is, possessing one of us. Okay, this is the key to Grimig's vault. We're going to need that. And you can see his face is now overlapped. Gordon's. That shows that we are now possessed. Now, since we're going to be quick about this, it's not a big deal. But you could get possessed by this guy as early as when you first arrive in Barovia. And that becomes a problem because I'm almost positive that over time he does harm to your character as he possesses them. So you're better off just getting possessed when you need to. Because you can't even get to the cemetery without first going through the caverns and the temple. So, here we are. I get past these trees. Stupid trees. And we're about to enter the cemetery. Now, the cemetery is fairly dangerous. It's crawling with ghouls. I can't imagine any rest in peace here. There are undead about in number sufficient to wake the dead and do grievous injury to the living. So yeah, there are tons of ghouls wandering around. They are horrible, uh, flesh-eating undead. They also can paralyze with their touch. That's what just happened. He just got paralyzed. aren't the most dangerous thing to be found down here. The real threat in this place is vampires. You might be able to see one way off in the distance over there. Yeah, there's a closer one. You can see something that kind of looks like a blue humanoid. That's a vampire. And they are a problem. such a problem that we are going to use our wands of fireballs against them. Now why are they such a problem? When a vampire hits you, it can drain your levels. Now, anybody who's played D&D in similar games are familiar with what that means. Those of you who aren't, I'll tell you real quick what that means. They literally will take levels away from characters. So, like Gordon here is a 6-6 fighter cleric. He gets hit by a vampire, he becomes a, say, 5-6 fighter cleric. And that is each time he gets hit. Okay, we're just going to rest in here real quick. We're going to go take on the Ghoul Lord. And 
saving is probably a good idea. Now, when you lose levels, you lose all benefits of being that level. So if he lost his cleric levels, he would be able to cast fewer cleric spells. If he loses fighter, fighter levels, his hit points go down, and he's less likely to hit enemies. And when you get to zero levels, you just die. So, let's go take on the Ghoul Lord. Oh, he's all by himself, wandering around. That might not be so bad. <laughs> Poor guy. You got paralyzed. You can get paralyzed for long, though. Okay, let's see what goodies he has here. My bones ache. They have ever since we neared that rod. If that thing could speak to us, it would have something to say about bones. Yes, bones. This is the rod of rebirth. We're going to use that later to bring the dead back to life. Let's see. Nope. We got plenty of non-magical equipment, so we're just going to focus on things that are magical, like this chainmail. What we got in this chest? Ring of fire resistance. Very nice. Let's put that on somebody. Well, we'll put it on somebody in a minute. And some unusual gold dust. Here, Gordon. We'll make you fire resistant. Grimrig, Grimgrig, is dead, and hopefully that will satiate the jeweler's ghost that has possessed us. We have accomplished what you ask of us, O oh vengeful spirit. Will you leave now and be done with us? Aye, you are free. Now I will join my family, those joyful spirits taken from me so many ages past. For your troubles, I give you a key. With it, you may open a door within my house, and there find my greatest work of all. Wonderfully cut, it is worth more coin than you have ever seen. May Helm guide you, and farewell. Alright, so now we got a key to a hidden room in his house, which is also important for the story later on. The graveyard has lots of nice goodies, if we take the time to look around. And we'll check out some of these, uh, crypts as we play. But we have to be very careful of vampires, and not need them ruining our day. Probably shouldn't have used burning hands to take out one. Now on the frost. Alright, come on. Oh, I think I missed. Oh, I definitely missed. Storm. A magic water staff. Regular old robes. Come here, you. Stepping mode is pretty useful for getting around a map, but makes enemies jump around a lot. Ooh, what do we have here? An NPC hiding out in the grave?
You, halt where you are, or by helm you'll find yourself in residence here permanently. Explain yourself, man. Ha! Huh. What's to explain? Only one reason to be here this time of day. Aren't we all after a few trinkets? Whatever's left behind to ease these souls through the night? For the dirty job? Yes, it is. Not for the timid. So he's a grave robber. I'll agree it takes a certain courage to rob... Bar bar <laughs> I'll agree that it takes a certain courage to rob Barovian graves. Can you thieve as well for a common goal? Join you, you mean? Aye, and the likes of you wouldn't be about robbing graves. No, you're after something more noble than the trinkets of the dead. Joining you? Maybe I could find something more noble for myself. Something better than this dirty trade of mine. Yes, I'll come along with you. Alright, so now we have a rogue in our party. And he will have to replace our other rogue. Strange to say, but I've enjoyed our restless wandering time together. Perhaps we'll meet again and continue the adventure. But for today, enough will be enough. Should you need me again, come to Barovia and look for whatever place I've found to call my home. Okay, so we have Vuko, the rogue. We're also going to have to pick up all Belkia's stuff. Now, normally I don't bother to get him when I play. But, since we're, you know, playing a little different this time around. Checking out things that normally I don't do. We're going to grab him as well, see how he works out. just a straight up thief, which means he has the ability to pick locks, and that's really about all that he can do that's noteworthy. Belkia can do it too, but since he is just a thief by himself, he can do it better than she can. Now by normal D&D rules, thieves have all kinds of useful abilities, but this isn't normal D&D really. Okay, one more thing. Negative plane protection. This spell is one way to protect ourselves from uh, the powers of undead creatures, like those vampires. So while that spell is on, if a undead creature hits us, its special powers won't take effect, and it will get damaged for uh, hitting us. So it's a pretty good spell, but one of the downsides, and a fairly big downside at that, is it only works once. So right after we get attacked, you know, if we get successfully attacked, we'll be protected from that one hit, and the creature will take damage. Did I miss everybody, or did I just not take anybody out with that? Sounds like one of these ghouls got killed by our negative plane protection. See, so yeah, it also works on the ghouls and stuff. Now, when a ghoul hits you, it's not nearly as bad as, say, when a vampire hits you. Getting paralyzed can slow you down. But losing a level can set you back considerably. Alright, more goodies. Not magic. Not magic. Not magic. Now, the only reason I'm checking these is because at this point, it's not worth grabbing equipment if it's not magical. Up, oh, a magic axe. That's because we're at the point in the game where we mostly have magical equipment. Oh, you can't use a halberd, can you? I mean, you can use an axe. I'll have to check out what that axe of hurling does. Okay. There are a couple more places we have. Well, not places we have to check. There's one more thing we have to find. 
before we can progress. In fact, you know what? It might be worthwhile to show you now. Uh-oh. Stay away from us, vampire. I want none of your shenanigans. so hasty in passing. This curious herald upon the wall deserves examining. All information is of use in a strange land. In death our sister wards below, secure in this her lover's tomb. Her voice an angry, gripe, an angry, grieving shadow raised to avenge her lover's doom. Her cry a wail throughout all eternity doth streak, doth slay the intruding foe, at this place where evil jealousy did deal the evil blow. In death, elves to Edeneath must go, but this our prince denied, so here with faith, through darkest fate, we stand, watch, in a mortal pride. Dust to dust our blessings gain, a magic to calm our sister's soul, and then below seek out the sign, that Abernath will release us all. So that's our clues on how to get in there. And I'm gonna show you what's in there. Oh, shouldn't have saved there, but we'll live. And I'm gonna show a flame strike while we get it at. There's that. That. That's, that's Flame Strike. Flame Strike is awesome. That is a Banshee. Banshees are immensely powerful. And I don't think we could actually beat this thing, no matter how much we try. Ah, uh, you see, she just took out two of our dudes with one hit. Banshees, when they cry, when they, when they scream, when they shriek, can kill you just by hearing it. And that's happened to them. Uh -oh. Beatrice is taking me. It's up to you, Gordon. Uh, there's the game's death animation. Figured now was as good a point to show it to you as any. Alright, give me a second, we'll load back up to where we were. Alright, so we're back. Yeah, Banshee. We can't get past that thing by fighting it. But, come on. This inscription over here mentioned dust to get our blessing. And we have some unusual dust. We need two of them. So we gotta look for the other one. I say there's two of them because if you look, there are two statues. Stop that. We'll hit the ghoul. clear out the, the cemetery. I think every time you go in and out of a door, the enemies respawn. That, that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to go inside and rest. Alright. Cast prayer to buff ourselves up. Now let's go see if we can find that other thing of unusual gold dust. That be cool. It's around here somewhere. Gotta 
keep our eyes open for vampires. Do not want a vampire ruining our day. Oh, there's a vampire. Okay, fireballs for everyone. Guardian, can you speak with us? Might you reveal the secret over which you watch and ward? Long ago, in a fit of jealousy, a prince of our land slew a warrior who was brave and true. In forsaken ground he rests, far from home, burdened by an unjust death, unable to reach the precious Adonai. He waits in stillness while we stand guard. We watch for a gift of ensorcelled dust. And then for heroes, brave and just, to add God's blessing and receive the love. The gift of dust is yours. Now please hear our words. May we, in turn, receive the gift of your blessing. Your offering reveals your heart, and my blessing I bestow upon you freely. Hear me, though, for my sister awaits your presentation. Both she and I beg with pleading hearts for your assistance. Aid, if you can, the warrior whose uneasy soul awaits below. Alright, now we'll do the same for the other statue. And get to it. Patient guardian, will you speak? Reveal the secret over which you stand your silent watch. In ghostly grief our sister wails, a lament to burst the hearts of mortal men. Long ago, an evil prince pursued us to this place, to vanquish our sister's love. As we stand without, her spirit watches over him within the tomb. There, his signet lies hidden, his honor and his only link to Adonai, cast down by the jealous lord. Only my blessing, when rightly asked, may calm our sister's tears. Elven spirit, how may we gain your blessing? Speak not of blessings before the story in its breadth unfolds. To find yet another doorway to the truth, my twin holds the second key. You have spoken with the other guardian, your twin. She has given us her blessing. May we, in turn, receive the gift of yours. Your gift of dust reveals the purity of your thoughts, and my blessing I bestow upon you eagerly. Together with my twin, I beg with pleading heart for your assistance. Please help the warrior whose uneasy soul awaits below. Alright, now we can go inside. But we can go inside now without getting wailed to death. You see, she's not there anymore. And I think that will be it for today. We will save our game. Let's see if it works this time. The tomb. And next time, we'll venture into the tomb and see what lurks for us down.